عليكم بانتقام طالبات جامعة حفصة ولا المسجد أرينا نظام الخلافة الإسلامية في باكستان وفي كل ऑब्वियसली मैं अपने आप से बेहतर किसी को भी नहीं समझूंगी मैं डिमांड करूंगी कि मैं स्टार हूँ मुझे प्रूफ दे ना मेरी है आज इस लड़की के ऊपर बात बनती है उसको फर्क पड़ता है और मुझे कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता रामजनी जो है वो मुझे सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं कि मैं यहाँ की लड़कियों को दूसरे मुल्कों में शो करा सकूँ। पासपोर्ट मेरे पास है। इसे कहने में कॉल अभी यस करने लंच काट के खोलता हूँ मैंने उसे डब बंद कर। यार तुम क्या खैर है तुम्हें जिसके सामने तुमने प्लान बनाया था ना उस बंदे ने कभी कभी तुम कुछ क्या किया कभी तुम कुछ क्या किया खैर है तुम्हें चेक किया मेरे बैग में से चार यार बात नो मुझे नहीं पता मुझे जाल करूंगी मैं तेरी माँ की फुद्दी में अब्लांग दूंगी Should we begin with some context, or do folks have questions, or um, I'm, I'm, I reckon there are probably a bunch of questions. The only answer to that would be I'm here now, <laughs> after three years. But uh, I do work in Pakistan. I made that film uh, three years ago. It was played at almost 50 film festivals and uh, last year I shot the this film um, you just saw the trailer and uh, just like the first film it was very like gonzo um, very um, you know um, really had to do it like um, hiding from the authorities I, I should say you know but yeah, I mean, this one was more dangerous because we had to go to like villages and towns uh, of Pakistan. So um, yeah, it just had like a three person crew and that is what we did. The first one was, um, it, it was shot in like two, or two, two weekends, but we spent like uh, a month and a half with the community because you know, it's really hard to get into that community um, so there was a whole lot of time researching with them, and there's a lot of like, uh, like handy cam footage, which all which also ended up into the film. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, the film was never played. That that this the first film that you saw, the film that you saw was not played in Pakistan for like two two and a half years. And last year in November, uh, we played it at our own film festival that we did, and it's for sexual minorities in Pakistan. Uh, it's funny because we don't even have a film festival. We had one film festival called the Kara Film Festival, which was uh, canceled or um, because uh, because you know they didn't have money. Um, so in November we started this film festival for gender 
uh, transgender and sexual minorities in Pakistan. That's where we played the film um, in Islamabad and Lahore. So that was the first time it was played in Pakistan. And I think one of the interesting things about um, the, because I remember, uh, I believe I was at the premiere. Wasn't, wasn't it the United States premiere in Seattle? Yes. No, actually, no, Frameline was the premiere. Okay. Frameline San Francisco. But one thing uh, that you folks might not be aware of is despite, because I remember uh, hearing from Saad on how difficult it was, and you, you almost had to sneak around, right? Because there's, there are even goons and spies and so on. But this is even in light of the fact that since 2012, Pakistan is one of the first countries in South Asia to actually have a law that recognizes the so-called third sex. This didn't happen in uh, India until 2014, and right now Thailand in this year is considering this. But you know, this really, in a sense, uh, when we think about queer identity or we think about um, being progressive in the ways that we think about gender, sexuality, I mean, and here in this country it's blowing up because Hillary just announced her um, intent to run, right? And we think that that's, you know, the, the, the leaders of the free world or the so-called West are so innovative and um, progressive with gender. And actually, these kinds of things have been a part of South Asian culture, iconography, and even um, in legally uh, since 2012. We don't even have in the United States a third sex or third so-called third gender. So it was recognized. like a third, it's, it's third gender law, which means now we have three options on our identity card. We have the male, the female, and the third gender option. So anyone who's transgender, or, or as we call it, Khwaja Sara, which is an umbrella term, and you put all of gender and sexual minorities in it, um, so they can they can opt for that. But no, like no one really opts for it because then they can't travel to to um, the UAE and they can't go to Saudi Arabia, you know, for the pilgrimage. And also, you don't have that option on your passport. So. I mean, people are saying it's a, it's a step towards, you know, uh, identifying, uh, you know, transgender rights. Um, but no one's really opting for it. And something else, uh, yeah, thanks for the context, and something else that may interest you folks in terms of thinking about what you've just seen, and surely when you go and see showgirls, and also in the, in the context of other queer or um, gay or lesbian, LGBTQ uh, texts, visual texts that you might have seen. I'm sure everyone's seen Brokeback Mountain and other more popular sort of American texts. But uh, one thing to note, if you saw at the end, uh, the, the, um, the uh, writing at the end said that uh, under uh, Kami was uh, arrested under Section 377. And it's important to know, this is actually a pan uh, British colony section. So when the British colonized a lot of the countries in the world, as you may or may not have known, their presence in South Asia was for over two centuries. Um, they instituted the British Penal Code 377, which criminalizes any sexual acts um, against nature or the, any sexual acts that uh, articulate offenses against nature. Uh, this isn't even same, just same sex. It can even be queer sex or you know sodomy between heterosexual couples. But this, uh, what you saw there, that's also the same law that is. Um, there's a huge civil rights movement right now in India right now to repeal that. So it's also interesting to me how his work. I mean, both the films because the the new one as well is really challenging not just the. Um, conventions of gender and sexuality, but also how those conventions have been inherited and instituted in the legal code that was inherited by the former colonizers, the former oppressors, which I find really interesting because um, you know when we think ab about the ways that queer phobia, um, sexism, misogyny, um, and also um, Islamophobia, I have to bring that up because you know we're in the U.S. And our country tends to, you know, um, cer certain people from certain places often get demonized certain ways. But it's ironic that even in the wake of all that, we see these kinds of representations. And, and for me, that makes it really important to question how liberal really are Western conceptions of gender sexuality, especially when these laws, Section 377, that is British instituted. And that's the actual history of it. So, yeah, the, uh, India was trying to get rid of it, and they did get rid of it, but they reinstated that. But in Pakistan in the 80s, so we have the same law, the anti-homosexuality law, uh, but the but the penalties, like after the 80s, there was a dictator, Zayal Haq, uh, the, the, the penalties are now Islamic, so the, penalty, the penalties are based on Sharia. So it's the same law bequeathed 
by you know from the from the British Raj or from the um, from the from from Great Britain, and and that it's the same law, but we um, you know the penalties now are based on Sharia. Um, that is that is the difference in Pakistan, which means like you can get like you get like certain l number of lashes um, if you're gay. Never really happens, but that's the law. Um, let's talk about uh, if you guys have any questions about the. Definitely. So, were there issues like with the. There, there are mics on the side, so if you want to speak into them. So, he asked if there were any issues about the safety of the subjects. Uh, for hide and seek, uh, the subjects traveled with us to film festivals in, in, in Copenhagen, Bangkok, um, and in Australia. Uh, that was definitely like the main concern and that's why we didn't you know show the film in Pakistan and also uh, it was just showed in film festivals we didn't give any like big in interviews uh, this is a question which is re very relevant to my new film uh, because with the, f the trailer was online for six days uh, because we had to get funding for our post-production um, and uh, it was on Indiegogo and it was just like picked up by Pakistani media and also like international media and they started writing about it and it that you know that led to the you know threats to the girls and and us and in six days we had to like take it take it off um so we're still dealing with like the second film we don't know like how we're gonna do it i don't you know we're, we're still thinking about it but the first film you know it's been three years kami was arrested twice um but that was because he was, I mean, he was coming from the screening. And to be honest, like, he was he was arrested because the police said that he looked too flamboyant. Like, he looked, like, too effeminate on, on the airport. And that's why he was arrested. Um, yeah, but he was out in, like, three nights. Um, Wasim, on the other hand, we never, you know, we never got in touch with him. Uh, because as you could see, like, he was, you know, he was, he was raped by his uncle. He used the word, he uses the word rape, but that's like, yeah, I mean, it, it, it just means sex in Urdu, you know? He doesn't, that, that's, that is the word that he uses. And the guy was like prying at the back, like when I, when I took him to the rooftop, from the, from the room to the rooftop. We only had like three or four hours with him. And from the room to the rooftop, and he was over there, and, and, and the film starts, and he's like, you know, uh, my uncle's watching me, and I'm like, uh, what is he, like, why is he watching us? He was like, he's afraid I'm going to tell you the truth. So that was the uncle who had the kid who was also in the film. And when he figured it out, he had to, like, you know, him and his father, they, they pushed us out of the house. And... Like we try to get in touch with him, and always like his father used to pick up, or his uncles used to pick up. Pick up. Um, this year at my brother's wedding, because he was a wedding entertainer, at my brother's wedding, he was a wedding entertainer, and I saw him after like three years, and I told him about the film because he was the only one who didn't know, like what, like what happened to the film, you know. So I told him about the film. He was really happy, and he was telling me that he was going to go to Dubai, um, to you know be a wedding entertainer there. Uh, Jenny, on the other hand, like in the film, she's she's really depressed because she was not allowed by her college to fully transition, and uh, was obviously dealing with you know um, issues with her like religious identity, and also she comes from a tribal family in Quetta, uh, um, so she was dealing with a lot of issues, and obviously she was not you know allowed to fully transition. That was. That is a problem she's dealing with. But last year, she came to the screening in Pakistan in Islamabad, and um, she she was I mean she was she that was the first time she saw the film in public, and she's she's happy. She's fully transitioned. She lives as a as a woman in Islamabad now. So things have changed in three years. Yeah, Kami's, Kami's, Kami's simply, I was telling him, like, you know, I was listening to Kami again. Um, 
Yeah. So I was just telling him that, you know, Kami himself is like... I'm not Kami's boyfriend. No, but I was telling him, I was like, Kami is simply love, you know? Like, he's great. He's so, like, brave and... And and so is his boyfriend. He's from Chitral, lives in Karachi. Yes, he's openly gay in a way that his family doesn't know, you know. And um, but yeah, he works in, as an editor in in Karachi. Um, yeah, yeah. He 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 wanted to be there. We actually recorded like a, a long interview with him as well, but it didn't make it to the to the cut. But yeah, he was in the film. If I really get into the details, it was three years ago. He, um, you know, I was studying at Boston University, and I wrote a short story, and it had a transgender character in it. I tried to get funding for it, uh, for that film, that short film, and obviously I couldn't get funding for it. Uh, got back home, put it up online, got in touch with the producer of the f of this film. He wanted to produce that, and I told him like he he was Danish Pakistani, but really ha hadn't been to Pakistan in, in a long time. So I told him that he, if he wants to do my short film, which ha which deals with a few transgender people, um, he needs to come down and we should research. So he came down to Lahore and we started researching and got in touch with, you know, one person and then, you know, like, it's like a, you know, uh, you know, through that person we got in touch with a bunch of other people. And we were, uh, initially we wanted to have some, you know, like talk to, you know, some l lesbian subjects as well and, um, they were obviously at that time were not willing. There was also this guy who was the muezzin of a mosque, uh, which means he he calls a prayer, um, and like he was a, he was a like a mullah cl cleric, and he 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 wanted to give the interview, but like he didn't show up. You know, the first time we scheduled it again, he didn't show up the second time as well. So this happened with like a bunch of people, you know, and as you can see, the film is like. You know, we we never really planned. We never really knew what was gonna happen, like you know, in those days when we were shooting. But it was all about like the community, you know, the community that we got into and spent time with. S my producer actually spent most of the time with them, and um, that's how that's how we got in touch with them. And we still are in touch with, except Wasim, uh, all three of our characters. And Neely uh, was uh, the guest of honor at the Copenhagen LGBT Pride Parade two years ago. And uh, she was also at the premiere. Um, and yeah, so we really believe to, you know, like have our subjects and, um, you know, they should also be a part of the success of the film. Um, what was what was the motive? I think it was it was it was really because I'm interested in in groups on the fringes of the society, especially Pakistani society, because I, I grew up in Lahore, and um, you know, growing up in in like in like a very like rundown area, I used to peep outside of my window, and there used to be like you know, you know, transgender groups who come and perform like every every weekend. They used to perform in the '90s. Now it's, I mean, it doesn't really happen that much. And they used to they used to come and and dance and 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 I used to peep outside of my window as a kid and I was like really fascinated you know, uh, but also kind of afraid because I didn't know like what to make of like you know them because um, obviously they're they're ostracized by us, but then they're also they were also very much a part of me growing up. I used to see them every week. And this, there was this one time I was peeping outside of my window, and these two, uh, you know, transgender women, they were on the curb of my house, and they were, you know, one woman asked the other one, she's like, well, your hair really good, like, what do you use? She says, I use, I use papaya shampoo, you know? And that was really, like, vivid in my head. So, <laughs> you know, I was like, that was the first time that they were not doing that all act of, like, you know, flirting with the, with the, burly men of the neighborhood and, you know, 
dancing on child, like they were not putting an act. They were just, it was a candid conversation between two people. So that was, that really stuck in my head. Um, and that is the same thing with, with showgirls as well. I grew up watching mujras, you know. Uh, my father used to watch it, and then my brother used to watch it. Mudras are like the dance that these girls do in theater. There used to be like this dedicated cable channel which used to show these dances. And my father used to watch it, and my brother also used to watch it, and eventually I used to watch it as well because we were like men of the house. And, you know, that is what, that is what they watch. And, and they will watch all of these mudras, and at the end of the entire like dance sequence, the, gr the girls, you know, dance on uh, these songs, they're laden with sexual innuendo and do like, they do like this suggestive, these suggestive moves. Um, and and it's, it's very interesting. And by the end of that song, like uh, for my father and my uncles, they were always the whores, you know? They were like, oh, they're the whores, you know? And, and, and that was the kind of, it, I mean, for a kid, it's very like, you know, confusing. I mean, you're watching them, you're consuming them, you're going to watch them, you're paying tickets to watch them, uh, but, but like by the end of it, you just call them the whores. So, I mean, that music itself and also like these women dancing, they were all like a part of me growing up. So I was, I don't know, I was at an interview and they were asking the, the same question, like why are you interested in these themes, you know? Um, groups on the on the on the on the fringes of the society and I was like because you know like I I grew up kind of grew up with them you know so maybe it's like an exploration of my childhood you know through these films uh so to be very honest I I just think like they're they're like they're passion projects they're about like exploration of my childhood that's that's exactly what it is um um, so for the showgirls, um, so I know in like Thailand, they're also, it's almost like a tourist attraction, right? Um, do you know if it's the same, is it like culturally different there? It seems more open or more prevalent? Um, or is like, I don't know, religious or cultural feelings different um, with regard to like sexual minorities? Um, so this is like mass entertainment, but for, not for the bourgeois or like the creme de la creme. This is like for the peop for someone who works all day long and they would go to like a CD theater in these cities, a few cities, and they would watch these shows and you know, that's just the way f for them to relax. Um, so, so even when like people watched like, you know, for six days when the trailer was online, people were like, oh, well, like, you know, this thing happens or, you know, some people were shocked, but then some people were like, oh, we've seen this thing happen, but it hasn't been shown this way, you know? Uh, they've always seen it in like a, like a, like a kind of like cable channel, which they would just skip, you know? So it's, it's mostly for, um, for like the working class, you know? So, uh, a guy who works all day long uh, and and you know goes to the theater to just like get gets his you know get his rocks off that that is what it is um so there are these the interesting part is like how the government you know control uh controls these, these dances or these theaters uh there's more control in the in this in the cities like the big cities but once you go away from it and like you're in villages and like small towns, the girls even take take their tops off, and no one is there to, you know, the government doesn't. Still yeah, they don't they don't do that. But in in big cities, they have to wear, uh, you know, kind of like body suits, you know, uh, and and they have to do a dance in front of five people from the local police department before the show, like a week before the show. So it's like an audition. It's like, what is the equivalent of Britain's, uh, like America Got Talent, you know, something like that. So you have like five, six girls queued up, and there are five men of the police department, no women in the, in 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 those like. And they're enjoying every moment of it. No, they're not. Are they not? Because they're not gonna get it. They they really are there to censor, you know, the dance. So the girls, they just like really like you know do like a modest dance in front in front of them, but like. Once the show is on, they just really sex it up, you know, and because obviously they, you know, people are there to watch them and they have to make money. 
so so then the police department like you know they would um you know some girls get banned some girls don't get banned um that that it's it's just it's so interesting yeah i was just wondering what the situation is around like female to male transgenders in pakistan yes um that is a very interesting question actually i know someone who's working on a project um I think they're working with Vice on that. But obviously they're, you know, as, as I don't know who said in the film that transgender are the only, transgender people are the only visible mo mo sexual minority in Pakistan because you see them on the streets dancing and they're begging at, at, at traffic signals. Um, Kami said that, right? Um, but th then then comes the the G, and B people, you know, but the L and, you know, female to male, transgender, they're, they're totally like, you know, in hiding or they're not in the mainstream for obvious reasons, you know, they're not going to be accepted. The reason m male to female transgender, uh, transgender people are accepted is because of the historical context of South Asia, because, um, you know, in the Mughal era, um, uh, the, the, the transgender people, um, male to female transgender people were the guardians of the harems, you know. And also in poetry, we have, um, they're called Khwaja Saraz. It comes from this poet called Khwaja Amir Khusro, uh, who, used to, who used to write in Persian and also in Hindustani, like South, South Asian language. And and it comes fr uh, and he used to talk about like you know f gender being fluid and you know about being transgender and that's that's where the respect uh comes in and also uh because people would not say anything bad to the transgender people on the street because they're afraid that they're going to get like a bad omen or you know um that is that is how they know but obviously like female to male it's it's totally out of the question and I guess just to follow up on your question uh, really briefly is uh, what that, and we had actually discussed, with, this came up in Baltimore, at University of Maryland in Baltimore where we last saw each other, but not University of Washington back mm -hmm. when I first met you. Um, and um, one interesting thing about your question and, and uh, the answer is that still indicates a kind of sexism around queer sexuality, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's the crazy part about it. On the one hand, men performing women or being eunuchs is okay, but on the other hand, women being lesbians or um, F to M is totally transgressive, right? It's the most um, abject of the queer, right? So it's very ironic how I mean, but we, I mean, you, we're, we're all here in New York City. We all know how even gay um, male identity can be very misogynistic. It can be sexist. It can be racist, right? I mean, we're we, we, we're exposed to enough here to realize those nuances. But I find it really interesting that in this context uh, that Saad explores in his work, um, that what seems to be liberatory can also be oppressive. Mm -hmm. uh, um, someone in the movie said something about I'm not the gay. You know, you know who who is begging in the street, but I go to the cafes. So there's a um, inherent classism as well. Yeah, and that's very interesting. The, the the Jenny talks about it. She calls herself a modern transgender because she went to school, you know, and she doesn't want to be classified in the same category as the traditional transgender people who beg on the streets or who dance on like weddings, and that's how they make money. Um, but she 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 calls she's like. She, I'm different, but then that also leads to her being doubly marginalized because A, she's marginalized by her family, B, she's the only place she can get refuge is the traditional transgender community, which is very strong. So it has like a hierarchical kind of um, a family structure. So uh, most of the transgender people are, are ostracized by their families and they end up in these, um, you know, uh, transgender, families which have they have this hierarchy there's a guru on the top and then there are protégés um, so jenny cannot fall into that because she doesn't want to be associated with it so 
she sees she's doubly marginalized in that way. She doesn't have support from from anywhere, not from her family, obviously, and then also not from the traditional transgender community, um, and that that also lead kind of led to her being depressed in the film. So yeah, there is. Yeah, so the answer is yes, yes. Um, so I think you did a really good job of uh, the fly on the wall, I guess, the, um, especially with Jenny. Um, you really let her talk herself into a circle and just prompted her with, um, well, you said you're depressed, you know, and you really let her do that, um, which I find impressive. I'm just wondering if there was a point in time where you ever find that found that difficult while shooting to not impose any kind of your own ideas or your own thoughts on one of their interviews or on a situation? So when I, I shoot, and mostly I have the camera, I really try, it's hard because I have to like connect with the subject as well, but at the same time kind of disconnect as well so that I don't have like a breakdown like my producer did with Jenny at that very moment. Like he couldn't shoot for like three or four days. And then I was, with my friend, you know, covering the other days, um, because it was it was too depressing and it was just too deep. And he is questioning her, you know. And I'm not really. I just asked like a few questions because I I just wanted to distance. My, I, I knew I couldn't I couldn't deal with it at that point, And he was there. And that is team. What what teamwork is all about, you know. Uh, there are moments when with. With showgirls, there are three subjects. All three of them speak different languages. Uh, and I speak all those three different languages. And I was the only one who, who had to connect with them, you know? Um, it, was, it was kind of hard in that film. Because I knew, like, with Hide and Seek, I had my producer backing me up. But in, 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 in Showgirls, I had a producer who was Canadian, Pakistani, and she could initially could, could bar she, she, she could barely speak Urdu, which is my first language. And you know she couldn't speak the rest of the three regional languages that the girls talked in, you know, and so so it was it was actually hard for me in Showgirls of Pakistan, because I'm I'm very much attached to, I'm very much attached to my subjects, and I'm, to be honest, I'm 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 just still processing like how how to really like ha you know get it out there, but also make sure that the subjects are safe because they're in like villages and towns. You know, that is, that's, that's not a safe spot. Yeah. One, one thing that might interest uh, you um, and the rest of you that are here is um, there, there was actually, when we did this event in Seattle, and I hadn't, I had, we hadn't met yet, I, I turned up through a queer South Asian group, um, the president of the queer South Asian group refused to moderate this talk, and that's actually how I stepped in. I don't know if you remember. And um, one of the, it was really interesting because one might think, well, the queer South Asian groups here in New York, it's called Salga. In Seattle, it's called Tracone Northwest. In DC, when we last saw each other, it's called Kush DC. Um, and there were, there was a faction, and I, you know, lo and behold, surprise, surprise, it was the gay, upper class, gay Indian males of that group. I'm one of those, but I didn't agree with what they were saying. They had a major problem um, because they felt like Saad was, um, why did you have to have it, one of the characters, he's saying, oh, well, my uncle used to rape me. So you're, 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 you're projecting us as, well, we only have sex through rape, or there's some sort of sexual violence connected to same-sex attraction. That's, uh, the logic is really flawed in that, but I don't need to get into that. The second um, big complaint was, at the end, why did you, ha why did you have to have a character, um, a subject? Why did you have to represent or give a voice to someone who regrets having to being castrated? Why? Because you're, 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 you're uh, proposing, you're representing us as rapists and eunuchs and full of regret and all. Remember when that in, in Seattle? And it was this huge thing that happened. So um, There was also an announcement before the screening uh, where uh, Seattle South Asian Film Festival, they were like, oh, we, you know, it's, it's totally at your discretion if you guys want to walk away. Like, it was, it was crazy. But then also, my answer to that was, uh, these are personal stories of these individuals, and they're important. And I also told you, you wanted to talk about it at the Q&A uh, 
and I Q and A session, and I think we're talking about it right now because I didn't want to talk about it at that time because I was like, if someone has a problem with the film, they should come and watch it and ask me a question that I can answer. But I don't want to take the spotlight away from from the personal stories of these these subjects who put their lives at stake, and you know, and you're watching their stories, and we're going to talk about someone who has a problem with it who don't he who are not even going to like show up in the audience and and talk about it. But one thing that we have to understand that these are personal stories of these individuals, and 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 they're very very important, you know. Um, that that is exact. I think that that is what I said to you as well. I didn't I didn't want to talk about it. I was like, I, if they had a problem, you know, they have a problem, they should come and ask me. I actually came up to him before and I said, these are the two issues, and let's come up with answers now, because I I'm not I wasn't I was I, w I was having nothing doing with oh sure if you have a problem with what you're about to see get up and walk out. You know, I'm, I'm teaching um, the bluest eye, Toni Morrison, right now. I had to do the whole disclaimer to the class. Oh, it's got rape and incest and all this. And then I said to them, welcome to college. Mm -hmm. It's rape, it's incest, it's racism, it's violence, it's, it's, uh, it's prostitution. Better us talk about it in here in the safe space than you go outside and have to deal with it in your real life. But here's the thing. These right. are, you have to understand the cultural nuances and the cultural context. When he says rape well, that's kind of... He's not saying that is the only way he can put it. Like for him, sex is not a not in his vocabulary, so he uses the word rape because that uh, that is how he's learned in, from Bollywood films, you know, and uh, that's that's how he puts it. Um, it sounds like cons like cons consensual, uh, yeah, consensual sex between these two individuals, and the guy happens to be his uncle, and the that is what it was that was his own personal story and it's 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 so it's so important that he's shared it with us and we have to like you know show it are we about done Wait, does anyone have any other questions Jenny spoke about something i think she was the only one who spoke about it so me she is uh, somebody who works There are there are a few groups, and actually Neely is a part of that group, this, that specific big group, and also Kami. Uh, so they belong to that group, and they do provide counseling, and they do HIV testing, and they um, they do like various things for the LGBT community. Um, it's internationally funded, and also yeah, yeah. Okay, dude, like, is it was so interesting. Like, uh, I think someone asked a question to me in one of those, uh, in one of these uh, Q&A sessions that what was the thing which was, which was, I mean, all of it was interesting to me, like shooting it, but this bar was in the basement of a mosque in Shadman and Lahore. <laughs> so that was the, the most interesting, I mean, yeah. It must be quite underground. I, I've lived here all my life and I have no idea. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, it's like it's yeah, Central Lahore. And it's like we only got like 20 25 minutes, so maybe a little more to shoot and it was pitch black, packed with people, and that was the that is the only place we had to we had to put like artificial like fluorescent lights. I don't think it's there. I asked like whenever I go back, I ask uh, you know, I asked my producer as well last year if it's there and he was like I don't think it's there. Um there was another one in Jeff Heights. You know, Jeff Heights, right? Uh, in Lahore. It's kind of a space that keeps you moving, mm -hmm. which is an underground space. Like a rave. <laughs> he, <laughs> a queer yeah. rave. That, that it, yeah, the Jeff Heights one was, was very, uh, they didn't give us in permission to shoot, but this one did. Um, yeah, the, yeah, you had a question.
Not at all, because we the key is to spend time with your subjects, and we still have a relationship with it. And I, I just talked with our subjects, and I just talked about like how, you know, I'm I, f- I feel like I'm I'm in love with one of my subjects from Showgirls of Pakistan. So because I have such intimate relationships, you know, with them, and that's why there comes a point where your subjects totally forget that there's a camera there. You've seen this one scene in which um, the Toli or the pro- protégés and Neely, the guru of the transgender clan, they're on a mattress and, you know, they're doing their thing. And it's just, it's it's very candid. It's it. I mean, at that point, it felt like I, that was that was one of the moments when I felt like a voyeur, you know? Like, you know, I'm just there and it, the camera was running for like 30, 40 minutes and they were just doing their thing they, they just forget that the camera is there you know uh yeah i mean if obviously like if if i go and and, and if i you know if i don't have a relationship with my subject and i just like put a camera on and also one thing that i don't like is like putting so many lights on and like putting like a collar mic and that changes the entire narrative like right at that point because it all of these things affect the actual story so, I mean, I never have, like, you know, all, uh, a collar mic or, like, lights, except that bar scene. Uh, I had to put it up um, s- just to have, like, a very personal uh, connection uh, with my subject. I'm sure a lot of people do that, but, like, that is the only way I can do it. Obviously, like, shooting with small cameras, I mean, I'm not, I, c- I can't, like, move with, like, big cameras, you know, um, and do these things. Any done? Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you so much.